We're here at the 2017 Woodcraft Vendor Trade Show, and I've got Rob Cosman. Good to see you again. I've got Colonel Luther. How you doing? And I've got Rob Cosman's son, Jake. Okay. Rob, is a, you know, as you guys know out there, is, uh, is known for dovetail saws and many other products. But beyond the products, we, he is just dedicated to a new project that involves the veterans. Rob, tell us about it. Disabled veterans in particular. Not that we don't thank them all. But I met one. And once I met one, it became personal. And he said something to me. He said that ever since he got involved in hand tool woodworking, that it was the first time he found any peace from the physical and the mental pain that he suffers from. And my only experience with that was back, back way back in 2000 when I started teaching my week-long workshop. And I would have 45-year-old business executives come, and this was their diversion. And over the five days, you'd watch their stress level just drop to the point where they were completely different people by Friday than they were when they showed up on Monday. And so when Jesse said that, I thought, wow, maybe we should be doing something about this. So that has led to us teaching twice a year. We do two week-long workshops, two in November, two in April. We raise the funds. Many, a lot of it came from the generosity of Woodcraft store owners. We raise the funds to fly these guys into Buffalo, New York. We teach in Niagara Falls. Um, we take care of their hotel, their meals. Some of the local restaurants actually feed them for free. Great. And then we're able to send them each home with anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 worth of tools, at most of which the Woodcraft store owners have donated. Does it make a difference? Well, you read their stories, you listen to their testimonials. It get, allows them to self-medicate. And by that, I mean they can set up a little shop in their bedroom, spare bedroom in their garage. And when they get a dark period coming on, they can go out there. And when you start using your hands and your mind to build something, it takes it, you to a different space. Right, and they can deal better with the PTSD. They, they, all of them have said it, every one of them. This is not me putting it on them. That's them coming to me and saying this helps. So we're trying to facilitate it. We plan to continue to do this as long as we possibly can. Luther helps out, volunteer to come up and help us teach. And my you, son Jake comes and teaches right. as my assistant as well. And uh, I think it's a great cause it's us giving back just a little bit of thanks for what these guys have done. Right. And many of them are suffering and will suffer the rest of their life with wounds inflicted, whether they were mental wounds or whether they were physical well, wounds. They took they a bullet did. for all of us exactly. so we can exactly. live free. And there's a yep. price to be paid for that, unfortunately. Colonel Luther, you have um, been out there and seen the action. Tell us a little bit about why you think this program works so well. Well, uh, let me tell you a little bit about my story sure. first. Um, so I retired from the Army after 30 years, about four years ago. Uh, wanted to do woodworking all that time, never had to. And so I took uh, one of Rob's cl dovetail classes at my local woodcraft store, which happens to be up in Seattle. Really loved it. And I went to uh, next year to one of Rob's classes, which was the first class where he had a veteran in that he mentioned, Jesse. And uh, I really loved the teaching that Rob does. And I saw what it did for everyone. So. Rob invited me back, being a colonel. Yeah, well, being a, you know, the Army guy, maybe I could bend a little bit with uh, the folks that came in. And so this is the last class that I was in. Right. And what I really got to tell you is, you know, these guys, they go through tough combat. They've been in this military team together. Right. And then, you know, once the they get out, and now they're back into civilian society. They've lost all that brotherhood. When you see these guys come together and they may be broken and hurt, or uh, they instantly bring back that military bond together. And it's just amazing to watch the transformation that the, the vets go through in a week uh, with, with Rob. This particular class, uh, at the end I was, uh, of the class, everyone got together and said, hey, we got to do something for Rob have a big thank you. I want you to see his, uh, his apron. Yeah, you got a lot of badges going on. Yeah, so in the military, if you don't, they don't know, you know, every military guy, the unit has a has a badge, and right. so, so I got together with all the guys and this class and the previous one, and wrote them all and said, hey, get, send me the badge that you most associate yourself in the military, and so this each badge represents a veteran that has attended Rob's class, and we're missing one or two, but we've got about 90% of them here. And, uh, you know, I, I think Rob can just go through and tell you the name of each person uh, you can associate. You know, you see the VRI badge happens to be Jesse, Jesse here. You can see his T-shirts. He's a, one of he's our Canadian, a Canadian infantryman. Uh, you see uh, Terry there. He's a Vietnam vet up 4th Infantry Division, which is right here. Backwards, I can't see. Right here. Okay. So uh, we, we wanted to give Rob something 
to personalize the experience that he's given everybody. Right. And so that every time he does woodworking now, he can look down and, and the you know, the the badge represents a face of somebody that he's helped. It's a really great program and, and that's yeah, uh, now explain this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're Henry, which so is associated with a MASH unit. I'm a big MASH fan. So whenever we would go anywhere, my kids, we would always watch MASH. We'd watch the same episode a thousand times. So we know MASH trivia. Test me. So anyway, so Luther knew that. So he made me an honorary colonel, even though Henry wasn't. He was lieutenant colonel, but that's all right. He would get promoted. Yeah. So, uh, right. Had he not died, he would have. So I'm Henry. So Jake, who's a right-hand man. Right. He's radar. He's radar. Okay. And we have another guy. He's not here. He's Rizzo. So if you very cool, you gotta know that if you come to the class for a week, you get a little humor going on you, too. You're gonna you know? spend all the you're gonna you spend a lot of time. Up. Yeah, you're gonna spend a lot of time on mass trivia, and no one's gonna beat these two guys. I mean, <laughs> it's like they asked me, what was the name of Radar O'Reilly's pet racing mouse? I mean, who can remember that? Right. So, so that's why that's what the the mass reference is for. Now you've got a, a new class coming up in November. Tell us about yeah. that to our so, audience. What we do, and this is for everyone, this is how we spread the word, uh, we do a couple of things. First of all, you have to understand the problem. Guys came home from World War II, they came back into a trade-based society using their hands. In fact, you know, I had a long conversation on the phone with a Vietnam vet just the other day. He said the day he got home from the war, right. he went to work as a contractor, mm -hmm. and uh, he was busy straight out for X number of years. Thought all, the, thought all that stuff was behind him. The day he laid up his hammer and quit work and finished, retired, he said three or four days later it hit him like a ton of bricks. He said, this stuff never goes away. Well, these guys that came back from World War II stepped into a trade-based society. They'd all had some form of manual training in school as part of the curriculum. So they learned woodworking, they learned metalworking, whatever. They built stuff. Right. They fixed stuff. The guys we've got coming home today from Iraq and Afghanistan have not had it because it's out of the school. It's no longer part of the curriculum. We really don't have a trade-based society anymore. And they're sitting there and they don't know what to do. So here's what we do. We have an online workshop. We broadcast a half hour training episode five days a week, 365 days a year, uh, 52 weeks a year, sorry. And it's $400 a year. But if you're a disabled vet, we give that to you for free. Right. Now that'll provide them with some exposure that they may not have had. It'll provide them with some training if they'd like it and want to do it. And it'll also motivate them. What we do, we make saws. We make dovetail saws. We make crosscut saws. Every time we sell a saw, we take 10% of the cost of the, of the sale, we put it into a tool fund. And then we, we have, if, if a vet would like to get involved and he can't afford it, he doesn't have the money, if he contacts us, we'll get him some tools. We've sent out a couple packages in the last couple of weeks. And then, our, and then twice a year, in November and in April, we teach these five-day hands-on workshops. If the disabled vet will write me two paragraphs, just tell me why we should bring him, think of it as a resume, Luther does the vetting, but uh, we just make the decision and we pick six and we take care of all their expenses, everything, and we'll send them home with tools. So we have a class coming up in November, November 13th to the 17th, and then the second class is 20th to the 24th. We need six civilians in each of those classes, and they're the lucky six. That's what we call them because they get to be part of this. And then we'll fill the other six spots with the... Uh, if you did 12, you could call it Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen? Yeah. It's like yeah. the movie. Well, we can only put six. <laughs> We can, but it's it's fantastic. It's a, it's a great way to spend a week. Get kickstarts them. It allows them to go home, right. and they could literally go home and build a piece of furniture with just hand tools. So with all the expenditures that that Rob incurs, one of them is air flight for the guys, and you have some other expenditures that yeah, their hotel, their hotel, their, me, uh, their, meals, their meals, and uh, and help with the and tools even with as the well. discounts from the meals and everything. You still need help, especially with the airlines and, and you know, the housing. You know. Yep. So maybe you guys out there and gals can help this program. If you're watching this, go out to robcosman.com, and there'll be a tab out there that will link to the GoFundMe page, and you can help out. They really need your help. It's for a great cause. And for those of you who may not know, you know, the depths of PTSD and how it affects our veterans, maybe you can fill us in a little bit. You've walked that line. It's really tough. It, it, it's tough to be uh, downrange uh, where you have a tight-knit group of, of brothers that you depend on, you know they've got your back, and, and you go into combat and you see some really difficult and horrible things. And, and yeah. you get, even the, you know, you get in firefights, you get uh, um, 
in, improvised explosive devices happen to you, that's a really traumatic thing to happen. And then you, after you get through all that, it's even more traumatic because you'll probably get processed out of military medically, and now you have left your brothers, and you're out there by yourself. So all of that plays on you. And then and you come affects, home to normal life, right? and, and, and it's a whole different world when you get back. Right, and, and it affects everyone different. And you don't have to actually have PTSD to still be affected by all that. Right. So every veteran is affected one way or the other, and, and it, it, it affects everyone. So it's really tough on some guys. And, and I've really seen this program really improve folks. I've, I've, I just... The reconnectivity. I, yeah, I can just tell and you the stories. Yeah, it's, it's great. It really right. is. So woodworking is, is not just woodworking. It comes from the heart, the hands. It comes from everything. So I want to thank you personally for doing what you do. And thank you for your service yeah. and what you have done for us as well as helping out this program. Well, thanks for saying that. And thank you very much for, for being the cameraman and doing all the things you do for your dad. So, help us out if you can. We really appreciate it. RobCosman.com. Thanks for hanging in there in this video with us, and we hope that you're better informed. Thank you, and have a great day. Woodcraft, helping you make woodwork.